Hi guys, today we'll explore the new chaos scatter that is available in Coronite. There are a lot of new features in the newest update of Corona. If you still don't know what is new, watch my video where I go through all the new features. I put the link in the corner for you. Also, last time I shown you how you can use Corona decals. That is one of the newest features. You can find the link in the corner as well. Anyway, today we'll focus on the tool that gives us the opportunity to randomly distribute the objects. Let's jump to 3ds Max. I will use the scene from our advanced exteriors training that will serve us as a base. I put the link to the course in the corner and in the description below the video in case you want to check it out. Let's start by creating the Chaos Scatter object. Go to the Geometry panel, choose Chaos and click Chaos Scatter. And now let's create the object. Here I have the plants I will distribute prepared. I use the models from Max3 and from Glow Plants. I put the links to the stores in the description below if you want to check it out. First, we need to choose the object we will distribute the plants on. Then, I will add all the plants as the instanced objects. We can click here and add each model one by one or from the list, but there is a faster way to do this. We can create a selection. To do this, select the objects and type the name of the selection here. Click Enter. Go back to the Chaos Scatter. Choose your selection from the list here. And here we go. And now we can start the play with editing. We have different options for scattering. Today I will use 2D on surfaces. Next, we need to make the plants look like they are growing in a natural way. We can set it up in the Transformations tab by typing value 1 in the Normal versus Set. We can also choose different viewport displays types. I like point clouds and I will leave this. Start interactive rendering. It's too bright, so let's adjust it a bit to see it better. Ok, now let's increase the number of distributed objects. Maybe even more, 20,000. But we don't want to have the plants on the water, so we need to create some limitations. To do this, we should use the area tab. We can exclude the spline. I will use the spline that is in the center of the water. And now we can adjust the effect. First of all, I will set the near value so how far from the line we don't want to have the plants distributed. I think 400 cm works nice. Let me show you this from the top view so it's easier to understand what is going on. Now, I will set the far value which gives us an opportunity to create the gradient effect. Now, we can test different scale and density values. The scale and density work in the distance between near and far values. You can observe how it is changing on the interactive render. We 
even said something like this. Now, we can create more randomization between the objects. To do this, we can go to Transformations panel. First, let's create randomization in the position of the objects on all axes. Then, we can add some rotation randomization. In the z-axis, we want to have full rotation. We can also differentiate the plants by scale. We can set the scale from 60. And we can set the max scale a little larger. Now we are able to do even more, and we can adjust the frequency of the objects. Let me show you. Let's say we don't want to have so many of these plants with the pinkish flowers. What we need to do, we have to select the specific object and change the frequency value. We can set different values depending on the effect we want to achieve. Ok, and now I would like to add the path going between the plants. To do this, let's go back to the RES panel. I have the spline prepared, let's add it to the spline exclude. And again, we'll start by setting the near value. Next, let's set the far value in the top view. Now we can create a gradient with the scale and density. Here is how it looks. I like it. In the end, I would like to show you one more feature. We can manually edit the objects. We just need to click Edit Instances and we can move, scale and rotate the objects manually. However, we can edit only the objects that are visible in the viewport. Let's test it. How do you like the chaos scatter? Let me know in the comments. I'm really curious to know what you think. Also, if you'd like to know how to create outstanding exterior visualizations at the advanced level, I'd like to invite you to check out our advanced exteriors training. Click here to find about it more on our website. Bye! -bye.